This video will outline the step-by-step -step procedure that I used to mount a Niji A4640 laser module to my vanilla MPCNC Primo build. This diode is a good choice for the MPCNC because it is compact, easy to use, and very powerful. For a 12 watt diode laser, the price is quite reasonable. Of the various items included in the kit, the ones highlighted with red were directly incorporated into my MPCNC setup. A small number of custom components were also required, which I will highlight shortly. The laser module itself has a sturdy aluminum housing with excellent fit and finish. It has an adjustable focal length, allowing the user to tune it for either cutting or fine engraving operations. The air assist nozzle bolts straight onto the front of the diode module. It improves the cutting capacity of the laser by blasting away smoke and debris, and protects the lens from being coated in smoke and cutting residue. The only design oversight I notice is that it's impossible to use all four screws to secure the air assist nozzle. The tube fitting must be carefully rotated out of the way to even secure the third fastener. The adapter board allows the diode module to function at the PWM control signal anywhere between 2.5 to 12 volts. The included JST cable connects the diode module to the adapter board. The included mounting block uses an adjustment screw against a spring-loaded plate to secure the diode module. It slots securely in an L-shaped groove as shown. By referencing a blank MPCNC tool plate, I drafted up a custom tool plate to accept the mounting block provided in the kit. The model for this tool plate will be posted in my GrabCAD and linked in the description of the video. It was designed for easy 3D printing with no supports and minimal infill required. A custom control signal wire is required. I made mine from 22 gauge silicon insulated wire. It has female pin headers at one end and a standard two pin JST connector at the other. I also created this Frankenstein's monster of a common ground connector for the two independent power supplies I'm using. It's probably overkill, but having too much grounding is never an issue. We can begin assembly by attaching the mounting block to the tool plate using the two pieces of provided hardware and one extra 3mm washer. Next we must attach the tool plate to the z-axis of the machine. Initially I used the original system of fragile 3D printed nut retainers inside the tubes. The system was functional, but it was always a pain to align the nut retainers correctly, and it was not possible to apply much clamping force because the nut retainers are very fragile. I quickly realized it was silly to continue using this system, because I built my MPCNC from thick DOM steel tubing, which could be tapped directly for M5 fasteners. There is a convenient spot to mount the adapter board on the Z-axis frame. It can be secured in place with a few zip ties. Next, I use the provided wiring harness to connect the adapter board to the laser module. Here, I'm using my Frankenstein adapter to hook up both power supplies on a common ground. I connect one supply to the MPCNC control board, and the other supply to power the laser. The control signal wire is connected to pin 45 on the Rambo board for inline laser control, as per MPCNC documentation. It should also be grounded to ensure signal integrity. After that, the JST plug is connected to the adapter board, and the system is ready for testing. Using the discount smart controller provided in the MPCNC kit, we can navigate to the laser control menu. The laser power setting is a value that ranges from 0 to 255, but for this test, make sure to set to only 1 to avoid burning whatever the laser is pointed at. Finally, we can switch the laser control mode from on to off, which counterintuitively turns the laser on. If all has gone well, the laser should now be shining on the spoil board. The next steps are now to dial in the focus and make some test cuts. This procedure will be outlined in a separate video, linked in the description.